My name is Chibwelumpa. I'm the project manager at Bearfit Theatre, Zambia. Uh, so this is the Eco Closet project. It's a collaborative project between Bearfit Theatre and uh, a visual artist from Uganda. She's Sandra Subi. Uh, so this collaboration is meant to upskill the young people that we work with at Bearfit, and it is also meant to uh, highlight uh, climate change and recycling and trying to instill uh, this knowledge in the young people, the knowledge of uh, behavioral change towards waste and also to conscientize them about climate change and taking action as individuals and as young people. As Nang and Ne Docasia Soy, Jokera Comtendere, is a Comtendere, Calimtendere meaning a peace. So it's Nagainzo Panga feast. Calimelim Tendere Nicur in a section yari four, Palim Tendere A, Tendere B, Tendere C, and Tendere D. Then each meaning a peace yet ye ye di Comtendere, cause we are one. My name is Musa Zulu, I'm coming from John Howard and behind me here we've made two projects. So the first one, uh, actually both of them are barefoot logos but they have two different meanings. So for the first one, um, this is a barefoot theatre logo and these are basically the things that Barefit does. We create different types of performances which we perform and we support young people from different communities. So basically in this logo we use different types of materials to, to see to it that it's, it's, um, it's complete. Um, we use different cans. We use cans of Black Label, we use cans of um, Red Bull, hen can, castleite, any types of cans that we found, we collected them from different types uh, of communities, then we brought them. We also use bottle tops. So basically, when you see this logo, it uh, represents different uh, things that Barefoot does. We're coming from Kanyama, and we did um, research about uh, the background of Kanyama, and we just we found out that a very long time ago it was uh, a chiefdom and since farming failed so they tried to do trading. So Kanyama basically the, it's a trading place and we just decided to make something that's, uh, that speaks more about trading. So we made a jacket, we, we married fashion and trading. So we made a jacket out of bottle tops and we got an original jacket and we just fill up the spaces. So like when we started doing the workshops, I was very much excited uh, considering that I also do a fashion course. I was very much excited to learn this new skill. And then when we started the process, I'm telling you it wasn't easy because um, it was all about first when we we're sketching everything, we thought everything is going to be simple and easy. But when everything started, it was really difficult uh, looking at, we, we were sewing, we made small holes on the bottle tops and it was really difficult. It was a really big challenge for us to pull the twine through and along the way, we just, uh, we came up with a solution to make the holes bigger so that it can be easy for us uh, and we won't have challenges with our fingers. And then for us as a group, what this really means to us is that we have learned something new and it's a skill gained to us. We have learned and go with this along the way. And for the community, um, I've learned we, with this project, we can change not just the community, but Zambia at large, if we just continue with this and we adapt it. Um, as a group, we're really excited and we're really happy that we came this long way. We came this way and we made it. It wasn't just like we, we thought of giving up. We thought, let's change, let's do something simple. And then we're like, no, this is what we chose and we just have to do this. Our project is basically coming from Kamwala. So what inspired us to come up with this project is us trying to tell a story about how Kamwala looks like what is found in Kamwala, 
and what is Kamwala all about. So Kamwala is, is a place where you find things that has to do with clothing. It's, it's a trading center in short. So this trading center is mostly occupied with the Indians. And the Indians are the ones that have built it in a way that it looks Indian style like. So that's why we got the motivation of building the, the Kamala uh, using the boxes. Though it was, it was challenging because it was our first time working with something like a box, turning it into a, a, play, a thing that someone can, can easily recognize. And through the challenges we learned a few things and everything. So yeah, and then the other reason why we decided to use boxes coming up with this is because uh, Kamala being a trading center, it's, it's mostly found, like boxes are mostly found in Kamala. That's why we decided to use boxes to give a message to them saying these boxes that they're just throwing away can be used to make such things and something that can really make sense. And so basically this is something that's all about the Eco Closet project, to, to make use of something that doesn't even look like it can be used. So yeah, that's, that's what we did us as the Kamala people. So Bare Feet is a theatre organisation, an NGO, and we work with young people, marginalised groups of young people using theatre and um, other different forms of art. Uh, Bare Feet has been in existence for almost 25 years. Next year, actually, we're going to be 25 years. Um, and we've been working with young people. We started by working with young people living on the streets using theatre, and now we work with different other marginalised groups of young people, including young people with disabilities, young people on the street, and also just young people coming from uh, marginalised communities, because, you know, these are some of the pull factors that pull the young people onto the street or into other bad vices. Hello, everybody. My name is Sandra Subi, and I am a visual and performing artist from Kampala, Uganda, which we also term as the Pearl of Africa, Free Uganda Kalango. <laughs> um, but I'm really excited to be at Barefoot Theatre. I've been here now for a short period of time, and really what happened is that we got into a collaboration to think about wearing, wear, uh, to think about making wearable sculptures. So I personally have been making a number of wearable sculptures in my own practice and that is how Barefoot got to learn of it through a place that we gather as creative called African Crossroads. Um, this particular project was birthed out of a desire to really get the young people at Barefoot to learn how to use the material that is usually thrown away to create pieces that they could use to speak about the social issues that usually they go into communities to speak about. As Barefoot, we do a lot of performances like I've mentioned, and we make our own set, we make our own costumes, and this was one of the reasons why we thought, why not use this opportunity, first of all, raise awareness on um, you know, what climate change is and what the young people can do to be able to contribute towards this fight, but also how can we use these materials to come up with wearable costumes, or, and that's why we called it Eco Closet. Um, so that's, that's a bit about what inspired the project. We are working with young people from the communities. So these are local communities in Lusaka, uh, like Mtendere, Kalingalinga, Kanyama, Chivolia. And uh, these are young people from, that we work with at Barefoot. Uh, they come from vulnerable communities and vulnerable backgrounds. So this is an initiative to train them in the skill of visual arts and also to give them uh, knowledge about climate change action and recycling and also we hope that at the end we're going to have behavioral change towards waste and uh, towards how we look at waste materials in the communities because what we are doing here is repurposing the waste that was in the community into something that is valuable so we want them to to see this waste differently in future these guys are making like a, a wearable it's a wearable piece if you look around in the different we used sachets um, to really speak on like the playfulness of what we're trying to say well playfulness in terms of garden is the place they're trying to work with so they picked a number of sachets from those different and, and 
have built them if you see the green is supposed to guide the idea that we want to use green and we want to promote going green and then with each one they made eight different I think they are called Madame, 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 I'm learning, Madame. I'm becoming more, more Zambian than all of you watching. So the idea is that, you know, like, they told me about these ponds of plastic, that there are eight, so that's what the different eight sections represent. If you notice, it's the same pattern. It comes out from the green to the purple. And with this, I really just touched them. They wanted to start out with green, but we found that the sachets that we collected the green was the most, yes, so they used that to build the edges, if you notice. And then we went on, they went on to use the next available one, which was the, this, the pink. Um, after which we also explored using like the wrappers of plastic bottles, so like Mirinda, Fanta, Coca-Cola. And the way it's done is that the design comes from the outside coming in. And these central places, we have used to create like these skirts that are going to be placed in three particular places so that the piece is wearable by about three people. And with this piece, we really wanted to speak about how um, with this madame, they, are, they double as two things, which was very ironic and something very funny for us to both learn. That the same spaces that are ponds of sewage at a certain point in the year, also become spaces that children go into play. That was very alarming. It was also very fascinating at the same time. It's almost like this conversation we have with, you know, with like, with these materials, that they come and we are repurposing them to bring joy. But I remember the guys telling me that um, one of the things is that they become, they are repurposed into places of play for children because there's no recreation in garden. So then we started thinking about how we can speak on that matter, that juxtaposition, that something that really is hazardous is the place where children play. Um, and our like minds going to sachets, which are things that you find a lot of kids eating um, and throwing away as well, for us made us have a conversation at that level, which I think has been one of the strengths of this work is that you're working from the bottom up. You're not you're not really going past the government, you're speaking to the child, right? And you're offering them a play place. So we want, the piece feels very playful. Each person enters, as you will see, and, and dresses into the different places, and then they can move, because the way we do this is that um, we, we wear the pieces and then walk in procession in different communities. And the hope is that people come and gather and either try them on or ask questions as to why the piece has been created the way it has been created. So this particular piece is, is from the community Mutendere and many of these young people also stay within this community. And that's Mr. Richard, who is a hands-on. Please, Mr. Richard, say hello to the people. <laughs> hands-on and really like the, the guy with his fingers, like he gets things, he can make any material work, you know, for whatever you want to do. Um, but with this, they are creating an arm of peace because Mutendere means peace, um, and they want to speak on that matter. And we remember there were, there, were, there were questions they asked themselves. They say, we can't speak about Mutendere as a place of peace because its history carries that and its name carries that, but we can also make comments on wanting to return peace to Mutendere. So I thought that was very powerful. Um, it's one of our ab ambitious pieces. We have fought the battle. <laughs> of making the plastic Malibu, as you can see, it's like using plastic string, um, soldering guns, so creating holes for places to sew, uh, repurposing a lot of, we had a lot of these smaller plastic bottles because for some reason they are really, they are much easier to find. I think because people take a lot of, I think it's like fruit teller or fruit, what is that called? Fruity canna. So you find that those smaller bottles are more available. So we use them to make the lower section. And now, as you can see, they are trying to build the arm. There is a piece by the team from Kamwala. And we used boxes. I remember, I think it was Uncle Richard who mentioned that it's a space with a lot of Indians 
and that there's a lot of, you talked about a lot of box packaging. And so we're really thinking through also what are the different materials that we could use. And we thought this team could specifically work with boxes. And what they've done is repurpose different forms of boxes to tell the story or to share with us the different things that are in Kamwala. So you can see Kamwala Clinic. Um, really with them, also it was a conversation around, I think you could make a clock, um, and the clock is still from boxes. And then along with Uncle Richard, thinking a lot around, um, because for me as well, boxes is a, was a new space for me to work with. I don't usually work a lot with boxes. Um, but using boxes, using old fabric, reworking things like wood glue and exploring like I, I, I really just kept pushing them what are some of the things you really find on the streets if someone was to go to Kamwala what are some of the things that make Kamwala Kamwala and so when you see um, they have really tried to play along with the detail so the idea is that you you come from afar and then you move in close and you can tell the story and say, oh, that's that Airtel money, you know, that's Zantel, that's MTN Airtel money. Um, this is a spot where they're like selling nice fabrics and they were telling me this is exactly how they're organized. Um, I was saying, guys, they're stoned. We could have a whole like a Yango car. And so I really just encourage them to play and to build something, a story on this court or this clock of Kamwala, and I think this is what they have done, which is very exciting and lots of fun. Um, and I think a new experience for them and for myself as well. Yeah, so Tim Kanyama is making a really lovely coat from um, Bottle Tops. It was also like a conversation around their space and um, I'm trying to remember, why did we decide to make a coat? What was our reason? Let me see. Do you remember? Why did we decide to make the court? Uh, so we had an argument. Yes. Uh, we wanted to make something different and we didn't agree with it. <laughs> yeah. Because it doesn't represent us very well. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah, okay. Yeah, and at first we thought this was going to be easy. <laughs> then, <laughs> after starting the process, yeah, it was something else. It was something else. Yeah. Yes, you were going to do something that has right technology. What was it? Uh, also, we wanted to make lights actually. Yeah. We, we wanted to make a jacket and mm -hmm. a dress, a skirt. Oh, yes. Made, uh, made out of plastic bottles uh -huh. and uh, water circuit. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I remember. Yeah. I see. I see. So, I think one of the things that has made me really excited about your group is that. Um, <laughs> this was not easy. <laughs> this has been a commitment, isn't it? <laughs> like, they have had to... First of all, you had a lot of help from everyone, like from the whole team, to wash, to clean, to put holes. Even when you put the holes, they were not big enough, so you had to put other holes with the soldering gun. And I think one of the, the really special things is that, first of all, this is a coat that's used by barefoot, usually. So it has also been repurposed and just been given new life, you know. And then there has been the commitment to, can we turn this around so they can see this other side? To really like sew and build. Um, so if you see behind, there's a word here called trade union, which is also guided by. Mm -hmm, which was a thing actually that we spoke about because of a lot of trade. So, Kanyama is a place that has a lot of young people. We were speaking about how it has a lot of young people and how a lot of it is known for selling drugs and all this, like a specific kind of trade. And yet there's lots of other trade that happens in that space. And that trade is actually building, you know. And so we thought, first of all, we thought about making a piece that was using those papers that's used to sell drugs, the brown cement papers, the brown papers. And, and repurposing them. That was the first plan to write the TU. And then we found that this will work much better. So that's how we went into writing TU. But the heart was that celebrating the trade in this particular city, but also, these are also young people. And some of them are from Kanyama, isn't it? And it's not fair that that's just a tag that's put on them 
because they come from this space. I think he specifically is passionate about technology, about lighting, and so that was a thing we wanted to play with on the court, but we decided not to because we couldn't find, what are they called, like car batteries, the small car battery lights. Yes, as if, yeah. So, uh -huh. so one of what we did was to build the court. I think for me, it has shown, it has been a journey <laughs> of resilience, <laughs> a journey of commitment, eh? a journey of saying, you know, this is a thing we want to do and we're going to fight to do it. But also as we fight to do it, for me, the past, so like she's a, a student in fashion and she really loves fashion and she's also the group leader. And it was a thing of like asking her and saying, you know, if the court is nice in Zambia eh, and we do it very well, it will be nice in Uganda, it shall be nice in Kanyama, it shall, you know, a good thing can be recognized when you put time and effort to it. And I think for me then that changes the narrative of that story around Kanyama, that you know these are young people selling drugs. I think not. These are young people from Kanyama and this is what they're doing. And they choose to say no, but there are other forms of trade in this space that is making it what it is and we want to celebrate it through this court that's very performative. So they've sewn each one of these plastic <laughs> bottle cups and they have done it as them, isn't it? As yeah. you, onto this uh, court and really taken time. I remember they said, before we wanted to say only the colors of the, the flag, right? Yes. But then there was one missing. There were not enough bottle cups. Yes. So we said, let's switch one the arms to another color. And I think that's how we got to the yellow, right? Um, one of the biggest things, impacts that we're hoping, you know, to have on these young people is a shift of mindset. Um, every time people look at the rubbish and you know we have to look at it with a different mindset. First of all, how do we recycle? How do we minimize on consuming? Sometimes we, we consume a lot of things that sometimes you don't even necessarily need, um, especially fashion you know, and also just food and drinks. We consume unnecessarily sometimes. So for me, the impact that we're hoping to see is a shift in mindset. How do we recycle? How do we minimize you know, consuming unnecessarily so that people can, we can have youth or young people that are responsible and also think about the future when they're making those decisions.